This time on the show, Netflix comes to Linux, sort of. We'll explain how and what this might mean for the industry, then playing games and other Windows apps in Linux with Wine, which isn't an emulator, but it kind of is, sort of. Plus our favorite Linux commands, one of them involves chocolate, mmm, chocolate. Stay tuned, all that and more this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Ting. Hello, welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. <laughs> You're so creepy. My name is Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno -lust. I'm seeing spots. Yeah, I Where bet. sometimes the Wadsworth principle applies, and sometimes it doesn't. I hope your Thanksgiving was well. Yes, it was amazing. Excellent. I went to uh, Snow White's house, and uh, and it was fantabulous. I love Snow White. She's so you know, sweet. I actually got a high score on Galaga next to Space Mountain. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right, you went down uh, I only had Disneyland? To go, I only had to go to level 36. Yeah, I was having like, a awesome. stress out thing, and totally... That's like, awesome. It's amazing what like a day at Disneyland will do. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, it's yeah. one of the happiest places on Earth, so they say. Supposedly. Yeah, yeah. not bad, I must say. I kind of agree. Um, before we get into the other stuff, I do want to say, since right now is just with the uh, way that our schedule goes for the shoot, the first time that I've actually had to read any of the feedback from the episode before last, so that was 12-13. Uh, I'm still getting awesome emails from you guys. In fact, I'm responding to a lot of these in my own personal video blog, which you can find at hack5.org. Just scroll down, it's right under there. Uh, where the regular oh, weekly video is. Oh, that's where you're putting those yes. videos. Yes. I was and like, I'm taking he's a... tweeting these. Where are, they, where are they going? So they <laughs> automatically get updated onto the website there, and then I put cool. them on Google Plus and whatnot. And there's some really good discussions going into Google Plus, and I'm tagging yeah. a lot of amazing stories that are coming in. But we'll get into those another week because okay. uh, I have a lot more to say on the topic. But with all of that said, just a quick update. That obviously our money isn't good enough for that bank, and this is. Um, this, this is, what is it called, uh, a, a free economy or a free uh, market yes. or whatever. A, and so we just go somewhere else. It's a free, Boom, it's a free country. We can move on to a different uh, country. Totally. They don't serve our kind, but, you know, that's quite all right by me. God, whatever. so messed up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, not to get into another rant, let's just go ahead and get into, because we got fun, we got, we got wine stuff going on we today. We have wine. We have wine. We have a gift. And wine. We just started doing a new show. Ooh. We should mention that at the end of the show, by the way. Stick around for that. And we got a gift from a van. Yay, so, what's the gift? Want to check it out? I have actually not seen this. So this is from Richard. Oh, here you thank go. you, Richard. He says, I have my TiVo set up to download your show every week. I know how you two love old hardware, and I thought you could use this old Adaptech e or S C S I Scuzzy. PCI card. SCSI. Oh, it's a SCSI card. It's okay. a SCSI card. Do we have any Terminators? That'd be fun. <laughs> he said, I couldn't find the original driver disc, but I figured you could download them from mm. the internet. And he also gives the link for that if you want to download them. Enjoy. Looking forward to your next podcast. Oh, thanks so much for the PCI card, Richard. I love these. Yeah, that's you pretty know what? awesome. These make it's great. so big. They make great Christmas ornaments. You got a loop right there. You <gasps> oh, just that's hang right. Them. You know what? Speaking of which, mm -hmm. we need to bring out the Christmas ornaments. We got to get I'm the tree out. Well, I got some AMD chips we can put on it. Do you have some hats? Some Santa hats? Because no, I totally want to wear one. We could make those out of these. <gasps> we could make... Oh. Make Tyrannosaurus Rexes out of them. I could totally do a segment like that. That would okay. be awesome. <laughs> again, with the Wadworth's principle about this show. Uh, what again are we saying? We're drinking wine? Yeah. <laughs> mm. we're, we're having some wine on the show because we're talking about the wine. This whole episode is completely, like, wine crazy. It's I've weird got how that wine. worked out too because you've got some wine. Yeah, we didn't even we didn't plan this. We didn't plan for our outfits to match, but they totally do because I'm oh, whining and, and she's always whining. Okay. What? You don't have to tell them that. So you hear about uh, you hear about this Netflix on the Linux finally? Mm. It's it's kind of an unofficial thing actually. Yeah, I heard well, about this. Well, we are this. in California. I'm so kind of that's excited wine. that you were able to get this working. Uh, That's really awesome. <laughs> me too, because I will say that there are several things that have kept me uh, conflicted about being wholeheartedly Linux. As much as I want to keep that like in my heart, there are certain things, specifically Steam, which is now actually coming to Linux. Yeah, and that's that good coming stuff. to Linux, but Gaming, it hasn't been completely set And yet. video editing. And I have tried every video editor on the open source platforms, and there is nothing, unfortunately. Um, they don't I, look good with a neckbeard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Video editors don't look so good with neckbeards, it turns out. Or so says Paul, our editor. Linux. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I will... Uh, so anyway, I've been dual booting and playing with other stuff and experimenting with the dark side recently and whatever. Yeah. Anyway, point being, 
another huge contingency of running like Linux wholeheartedly is Netflix. And that's been an ongoing issue for years. Okay, so for the longest time, Netflix actually hasn't worked on Linux. And mm -hmm. why? Well, because of Dr. M. Dr. M. DRM, Digital Rights Management. <laughs> oh, oh, I got you it. See, Netflix relies on Microsoft's Silverlight. It's a freeware <coughs> application framework, and it uh, basically enables rich apps, kind of like Flash. And this is like a, a free runtime released by Microsoft uh, back in like 2007. It's been updated five times since then. Uh, an open source implementation was actually done with support from Microsoft by the Mono team, but the project was abandoned because there was like, well, let's just say it, there's really pathetic acceptance for Silverlight, period. Plus, there's proprietary restrictions. Mm. So many actually speculate that Silverlight will go on the, you know, uh, go end of life or go by the wayside. Um, and for many of us, Netflix is really the only reason for its existence still. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been previously a bunch of dirty hacks that people have attempted to get Netflix running on Linux through like Wine, or the consensus kind of was for the longest time, well, just simply run a Windows virtual machine and then you can stream video. But Yeah, but that's a crappy workaround. Yeah, well, one, you need a Windows license. Two, mm -hmm. you're now running Windows, yeah. so you're going to have to, like, you know, wash yourself a lot. <laughs> and uh, three, um, you're running Windows, and that's, that's <laughs> on your network now. Yeah, well, you, yeah so, you got you know, Windows. You so, got, oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> has, has your computer been uh, possessed by evil demons? I don't know. Look in the bottom left. Do you see a little thing that says start? Oh. I guess that doesn't apply anymore. Nope. Because the start menu is gone. Now it's just a little ah, Windows key. See? Oh, well. Anyway, it's a yucky solution. However, finally, there's a great solution by Eric Hoover, who has put together a nice little package to actually get Netflix going on Linux without the need for a VM, rather actually using Wine. So Wine, other than being that awesome thing that Californians make, and we yeah, know that to enjoy I a like ton of. Yeah, I kind of like this rosé. It's mm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's not an emulator. It actually stands for Wine is not an emulator. It's an application that lets you run Windows programs oh. in Linux. And it's pretty cool because it does so by actually duplicating the functionality in Windows. So when Windows programs call like APIs and DLLs, mm -hmm. basically it has replacements for those uh, Linux equivalents. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so basically, Windows programs can run. And it's kind of a crapshoot, but Shannon will get into how to make that a little bit better and not have to go into the whole dependency hell thing. <laughs> so what's We really... all love dependency hell, don't mm -hmm. we? Ugh, what's don't really we? nice about this is uh, it used to be quite a bit, I mean, this is only broken in the last week and it was before like you had to compile all this stuff. Now there's just a repository. So if you're in like, you know, Debian or Ubuntu, this is a really easy thing to do. Um, first of all, sudo apt get install wine. Uh, mm -hmm. Get yourself the latest version of that. And then all you have to do is add a repository, a PPA, uh, from Eric Hoover, and once you update, you'll be able to install the packages called Netflix-Desktop. So, um, there's a couple of problems I've run into with that, uh, in that if you don't set everything up beforehand, you might run into some issues, like so make sure that you get Wine installed beforehand, mm -hmm. make sure that you actually open Firefox before you try to install this. So basically what this package does is it installs a version of Firefox that's already set up with Silverlight, all ready to go, and it's kind of like self-contained. So you're running the open source yet Windows binary version of Firefox in Wine that has Silverlight. So there is already proprietary stuff in there. So you know this isn't for the oh, uh, this isn't for your Gen two crowd that doesn't want anything uh, you know proprietary. Right. However, this does work. Now there's also, and I'll have a, a huge list in the show notes because. You know, there's all these little workarounds you still have to do as far as installing fonts and uh, things Aren't like that to always. get it working. <laughs> there is, but this is a much better solution. I mean, I was able to get this running like 10 minutes. Yeah. So with all of that said, um, once you have this all done, basically you can run Netflix-desktop, and what's going to happen is you'll get a full screen. This is actually Firefox running here. And it's running in full screen. If I hit F11, mm, there we go. Ah, come back. You can see it's actually Wine Program uh, Loader. There we go. Okay, so so it's kind of forky. <laughs> well, no, it's it, it starts full screen. I didn't wait for it to load. It's actually here's my top ten. I can start watching Star Trek, and that would be awesome. Oh, cool. Um, or Battlestar Galactica, which would be almost as awesome. 
in a different way. And uh, now <laughs> I can actually start watching some Netflix goodness up in my Linux. Which... Well, I want to see you actually play a video on there. I know so, we don't have the uh, licensing okay. for it, but... It's going to be a little weird because what I'm doing in this instance is you're, this window right here, it says Mozilla Firefox in the top left. And yeah. this is just a Firefox window, a Windows executable of Firefox running with Wine in uh -huh. Linux. And to make matters worse, I'm actually running Linux in Windows. This is actually oh. a virtual machine. Okay. So for that reason, it's not working the greatest as far as sound and playback. It's a lot. It's pretty choppy, uh, but that's only because I'm running this in a virtual machine. So I've okay. got an emulated Windows environment in so a Linux virtual machine So if you Linux actually have this on your Linux Windows. computer, it'll, it'll work just fine. Yes. OK. Yeah. And so once I switch over to uh, a dual boot situation with this mm -hmm. new laptop, then I'll be able to show it oh, on the bare metal. Booting? I'm going uh, straight yeah. Linux on this one. Actually, we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks. I got a fun cool. little thing that I'm doing with uh, Linux on this machine. Awesome. Anyway, we'll get okay. into that later. But uh, but that's it. And, and so that's pretty cool because uh, now you're able to do that, which before was only thwarted by DRM. Yeah. And this isn't actually the first time that DRM playback on Linux has actually caused a stir. Back in 1999, you may remember that a Norwegian programmer by the name of John Johannesson, I don't know if you remember this, but he found himself on the other end of a massive legal lawsuit uh, because of this program called DCSS. And this uh, was yes. a program that decrypted commercially produced DVDs, and in that case, the DVD CCA, they were the organization that was like, mm -hmm. you know, responsible for licensing the encryption stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hit them hard with this like lawsuit about how it violates WIPO treaty and how DS DCSS can be used for copyright infringement. And it's a it's a fun, rich story. Uh, I remember it being like one of the first times that I got really into your rights online. Yeah. Uh, over a decade ago, and uh, it's it at that time it caused a huge stir. Uh, and it almost set some precedents in court. So it's a, it's a good read if you're interested in that kind of stuff to see all of this has happened again and all of it will happen. All of this has happened All of this happened before, all of it will happen again. It's called the eternal return, actually. And it's oh, really? actually a uh, nice. kind of Eastern philosophy kind oh. of thing. So anyway, that's another really good thing to read on your own time. Anyway, what I'm interested in is what this is going to spur in the industry because yeah, it'll yeah, be too. fun to see how Netflix responds. Um, you know, as Shannon demonstrated a few weeks ago, there's actually no technical reason why Linux, uh, why Netflix can't run on Linux. I mean, mm -hmm. for instance, a few weeks ago, Shannon was hacking the Netgear Neo TV, and that was just yeah, a Linux-powered set-top box. It's a Linux, Linux box. I just happened to jailbreak it, but you can run Linux on it just fine. But Netflix on it. Yeah, Netflix. <laughs> and so we had a Netflix binary on the that little embedded Linux mm -hmm. box. Yeah. So, you know, I think that if Netflix wants to not have a huge PR nightmare, they should uh, go ahead and embrace this yeah. or, or come out with something. Um, I know that there's like a lot of technical fun when it comes to actually getting digital rights management, which they contractually have to do. You know, they have to give it a best effort or whatever as far as their licensing of this content is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so th this could actually mean a lot of like rockiness for Netflix's relationships with their content uh, providers right. if they don't take appropriate steps. Yeah. Uh, it really is going to depend on how they actually interpret how this is running. If this is like, you know, they have no problem with like, oh, well, you run a Windows virtual machine in your Linux box mm -hmm. to run Netflix. So that doesn't violate anything. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see if Netflix goes all like, you know, Metallica on this or not. I really hope they don't because there's, just like what you said, there's no reason why it shouldn't work on Linux. It's You're still paying for your subscription with Netflix. You're just trying to get it in every way that you can. So yes. What's the issue here? We are all paying our brother or our <laughs> uncle or that neighbor right. to let us have that password for the Netflix. Of course. Yes. <laughs> I guess we should probably mention that they have been a sponsor in the past. They have, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were definitely a sponsor. And um, I had quite a few of my siblings use the... Uh, the hack five key for oh, yeah. the two week free trial. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say your password for your Netflix account. Oh, no. They don't let you do that. No, so. I don't let them do that. Yeah, anyway. So, with all of that said, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. Is this a, a solution? Is this a workaround? Do you think that, Linux, uh, that Netflix is going to fight back? Um, and, or do you even care? Or have you moved on? And you're like, you know what? If you don't embrace it, I'm not even down with it. You know? Mm -hmm. Just not let Netflix know. About it. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think they know how to Google. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. Well, with all that said, uh, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know, and we're going to take a quick break. But when we get back, 
It's more wine. It's time for more wine. It's we're <laughs> gonna slur our more words and tell and you about Linux. Linux. Wine. You guys have heard me raving about Ting recently on Hack5, and I'm so happy to report that so many Hack5 viewers are already taking advantage of their customer-first approach to the cell market. If you're not familiar with uh, Ting, it's a new service that brings clarity, usability, and major savings to the mobile phone users. They've got really one simple plan. It's so great. Get this, honest pricing, megabytes, minutes, text messages, they're all billed separately. So if you use more, then you just pay for the next tier. There's no ridiculous fees. And if you use less, you're credited the difference. There's no BS. I know I'm taking my existing phone over there. I'm so excited. So check out hack5.ting.com and check out their online savings calculator. You really get a sense of like, whoa, this could be majorly less expensive than my current plan. Um, so get this, your first month of service, just for being a Hack5 viewer, you can get $75 off your first month. All you have to do is go to hack5.ting.com and it'll automatically be applied. So go there, check it out, really cool service.